Hey, it's Skylar. Welcome to Skylar Loves Gordy Movies, my channel. How are you all doing today? It's day 17 of 31 Days of Favourite Movies Challenge and I am ecstatic to bring you one of my favourite, favourite movies of all time. And now watching it again, I love it even more. <laughs> And it's the 1976 movie, Martin. Yes, I'm finally reviewing Martin. I've been dying to review this for a long, long time. So let me get into this and then I'll tell you my thoughts. Here we go. It's starring Lincoln Menzel, Christine Forrest, Elan Nadeo with Tom Savini. Saravin, Sarav and Abel, Fran Middleton, Al Levitsky, and introducing John Amplus as Martin. Music composed and arranged by Don Rubenstein, recorded at the Triton Studio, Boston, engineer Jay Mandel, director of photography Michael Gornick, produced by Richard Rubenstein, and written and directed by the one and only. George A. Romero. Movie starts with people, what is like, what, with what it's like, what, hang on, what is like getting on a train, which, did they get on a train? And boy stares at the scale while she shakes their hair, then they all get on a train and the girl says to the conductor that, she'll, that she's off to New York Meanwhile, the boy is playing cards, then stops, gets his things and goes to the toilet and gets a kit out and gets a needle and syringe and gets a liquid and sneaks to a lady's room, picks the lock and she sta and stares at the boy, then sh screams and struggles, gets the needle and puts, it, puts his hand over her mouth. They then struggle again. And then she relaxes and sleeps. He then caresses her. Then the train goes by and the guy and the sleeping girl are now naked and he kisses her, makes love to her, then slits her wrists and drinks her blood and lays her back down to sleep. Then starts to wash his hands, dries the sink off and she's still asleep. Basically she died. Places blades and tablets around so it looks like a suicide. Then the man gets ready, looks around, gets to his knees, finds his needle, washes his face and forehead, gets his fins and looks back at the girl, opens the door and leaves, then sits back down, reads a book in his own cabin, puts his sunglasses on, then everyone gets off the train where he meets a man and needs to get on another train. So they're walking along and then wait for another train. Then the man goes for a wee and just makes the next train and sits next to the other gentleman. And then they both get off the train and walks again, stops, looks at a house and then walks to the house and enters the house and shouts, Nosferatu, Nosferatu, and shows him his room and reluctantly follows him up the stairs to his room. Pulls the mirror, then makes him speak and runs down the stairs, barges into his room and tells him that he's Martin, his cousin, not a vampire, storms off. Then the next day, the man opens his shop and Martin is home, slicing up vegetables, then a lady talks to Martin but storms off. Then Martin sits on the bench and ignores a guy on the bike and drives off. Then the lady talks away and Martin just listens to what she says and then they all sit down to dinner and the man says, look how he eats and says, put your finger under the... under... <coughs> put your fin finger under this... Pulls the lever and it's magic. Then another man comes to the table and Martin storms off to his room and playing with his toys. Then the guy puts something over 
his door. Then Martin, who is it? Then Martin is walking and carving something, carrying some things with him. He goes to house and the lady gives him some money, and then he walks to another address. Gives something to another lady. Her things, and then he gets into her car and they drive back into town, but stops for gas. I'm writing her notebook and put it back into the glove compartment and then she talks to him some more and then drops Martin off, thanks her and she says that there's more jobs for him if he comes back next week. Then back at home, the man and the granddaughter talk about Martin and how he's going to kill Martin and Martin sneaks out. Then the next day, the granddaughter and Martin talk about the family case and the shame and that Martin will talk to her and not to him Martin's phone line gets put in and he is the granddaughter on the phone then Martin goes on the train and looks at some shops and then a lady putting her shopping in the car and then gets an ice cream and goes to a house and gets some money goes off and then goes to a house and looks at a couple and spies on them and watches the man drive off then Martin goes to a shop and buys a remote and uses it to break into the house and gets in to the car and hides. Then the lady comes out thinking it was her husband, Richard, and goes back in. Then Martin sneaks in the house and goes into the bathroom, gets his needle and syringe, goes up the stairs and creeps into her room and finds her with another man and stabs him and goes off downstairs and the lady panics. And there's another phone in the games room, but when he looks, it's empty. Oh, sorry. And locks him out of the house. Then, oh, sorry. Then Martin goes back upstairs, finds her in her room and stabs her with the needle. Then the guy falls on the floor and tries to escape, but then falls on the floor. And he's on top of her and tells her that she's fallen asleep and won't hurt her. Then Martin drags another man's body to the forest, drinks his blood from his neck and then runs off. Then has flashbacks from his past and runs back to the house and takes a shower and goes. The lady caresses, then caresses her body, then dresses himself, gets his stuff and covers her body and leaves her to sleep and shuts the garage door. Then Martin talks to someone on the phone and they ask to speak to him on the radio station and hangs up. Then Martin wakes up and is told to come to church. Then at church, a lady taps Martin on the shoulder and says hi and then turns back. Then everyone talks and walks back to the house. Then Martin's doing some handy jobs for the lady as she's watching on the... She watches over watches on then stands over him and tries to touch him but gets scared and says the door's finished and walks off then at home then at home they're all sitting round eating dinner and talks about a priest and then they sit in the lounge and talk some more even about the devil then the granddaughter interrupts and asks the priest if he wants some cookies and then and then they talk some more meanwhile martin reads and sees pictures from his family and is getting more flashbacks and then a priest goes in front of martin and tries to exercise a demon from him and then martin runs away and the man tries to go after him and find martin but no such luck so far then the man walks past the park and sees what looks like Martin with fangs and frightens him and tells him it's just a costume and walks away. Then Martin walks by the train tracks and delivers more groceries and says that she would like to, to be his first. And they do it and get dressed and find her crying and that she can never have kids. And Martin then leaves and then gets dressed, comes down and talks to the granddaughter. And then the grandfather is talking to the man about Martin. And then Martin goes outside and sees the granddaughter and that she's got rejected. And runs back in 
and then confronts her grandfather and he slaps her twice in the face and tells him that she's leaving and the day she's going and promises Martin that she won't forget him and will tell her where she is and then they drive off and then the grandfather asks if Martin had his breakfast. Then Martin kisses a lady and then back at the shop a group of ladies confront Martin and shout at him and walk off. Then Martin scouts some ladies but can't find can't find any anyone. Then Martin finally finds someone and hides away and sees a couple make out and then talks to a radio station and then goes out and finds two men, knocks them out, closes the door and then gets a piece of glass, slices the man's arm, drinks his blood and runs away. Changes and the police sirens are going by and Martin is hiding. Then the police come to the shop and Martin runs off and the police chase after him. Then a man and police start to shoot each other and the policemen shoot each other and both are killed. Martin runs off and washes himself in the bathroom and then gets on the train. The next morning, Martin and his grandfather are in the store talking and then he sits up watching the customers and then goes to the lady's house and finds the lady committing suicide and Martin walks off. Then Martin talks to the radio station again. Then Martin is walking and seeing the parade and listening to the parade. And then the next day, Martin wakes up and the grandfather doesn't believe him about the suicide and says, Nosferatu, Nosferatu, and jams a stake and stabs it into the heart and Martin passes away. And then buries him and plants some seeds over his grave and blesses his grave and puts a cross on the grave. And that's basically... My review of Martin, um, my thoughts on the film, it's one of the best that George George Romero has ever, ever done. Like, don't get me wrong, I like his Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, but that tops it all. That is one of the best films he's ever done. I love it. I just, I love how Martin's shy and, and then all of a sudden he starts to come out of his shell and he starts to talk to people and but I just didn't I didn't like the only thing I didn't like about it was the ending. I just didn't like how he just wakes up and then the grandfather stabs him. I didn't think that was right. I I think they should have just let him explain what what is uh let him explain what was happening. And that's the only bit I don't get but other than that, it was a fantastic movie and well presented. And I know it was done in 70, I think it was seven, 76. Let me check. Two seconds, I'm here. Yeah, 76, I was right. Um, it's well made and even today, it's still a great movie from that era. It was like well presented and... I like the effects from it as well. And there wasn't much gore in it and not, nothing like that, but stuff like that. But you know what? I've just realised I forgot to do a rating for the last one. Uh, so I'll put Day 16's rating now and then I'll tell you Day 17. So Day 16's rating, 10 out of 10. Of course, I forgot to do that. And 17, which is today, which is now... I'm giving that a 10 out of 10 as well because I just love it. So stay tuned for day 18 and, of course, stay gory, have unpleasant dreams, and I will see you all soon. Ta-ta for now. Bye.